Floss Tube. It's Catherine, the Needleberry Stitcher. Today is Sunday, October 9th, and I'm back with another update because I did some stitching this week and I worked on several different projects and I thought might as well come back and show you what I worked on. Um, I also have another clip of a video that I started earlier this week. Um, it was my attempt at filming a Teresa Wensler video, meaning showing all my patterns. And I have a couple of whips for Teresa Wensler. I was going to show you those. So I started that video and it didn't go so great. <laughs> I, yeah, I'm going to put it at the end of this video. I'm going to show you my whips first. I'll put that video footage at the end and you'll see how it kind of went kind of crazy. I'll show you the video I did and then I'll wrap up the end of it coming back here and finishing it because I didn't finish it for a very big reason. Not really that big of a reason, but anyway, you'll see later if you stick around to the end. But so I'm going to go ahead and just jump right into my stitching for this past week and I'll show you my projects. The first thing I worked on was a new start and it was this Stitch an Inch Fall from By the Bay Needle Arts, which is what I got from the Needlework Galleria last weekend. And just so you know, I did go to Needlework Galleria last weekend. I didn't go for the whole weekend. I only went for a couple of hours just to shop. Just, I don't know if I said that in my last video or not, but I didn't get a chance to stay and stitch or meet a bunch of people. I wish I could have, but um, I just didn't have that time in my weekend, but I was really glad to, to shop and get the stuff that I showed in my last video. Um, so this is a pattern I got there last weekend and then I got it started last weekend and I still have a thread, <laughs> sorry, still on the go, but this is what, this is where I got to so far. It's just the first block of the seven blocks. So the pattern has seven different blocks that you can see here. There's seven across and I just did this first one and that's what it looks like it's amazing that this has this much detail and it's literally like this is my hand right like it's literally just an inch tall and it has that much detail in it it's really really cute and I really like working on it so I thought if I worked on one block every weekend I should be able to get it done I mean hopefully by the end of November at the latest and I think that would be pretty cool. I'm doing it on 28 count even weave and one, one, one over one, meaning one strand of thread over one square, full cross. The pattern calls for it to be done two strands um, continental or half stitch, but I'm just doing one over one because that's how I like to do it. So I think it turned out pretty cute so far. That is my first one. So I worked on that for a couple of days. I worked on it last, a little bit on Saturday last weekend, and then I worked on it a little bit on Sunday. My next project that I pulled out on Sunday night, it was later on Sunday night, and then I worked on it on, I think I worked some Sunday night, Monday, and then Tuesday. And on Tuesday, I finally got a page finish on my Tilt and Crafts artwork by Daniel Korduk. And it's Beauty and the Beast 2017 is the name of the 20, Beauty and the Beast 2017 is the name of the pattern on Tilton Crafts. And I got my page finish, finally got the second row of pages done. So when I pull it out again, I'll be able to start down here on the next, the next row. And that's coming along, I think, really well. I had planned on trying to get this one done this year, by the end of the year, but with my gap this summer and stitching where I didn't stitch very much, it's probably not going to happen. Not this year, but that's okay. So I'm putting it together a little bit. So I put little pieces of felt. I don't know if you can. I put little pieces of felt here at the top. Obviously not that messy, but I put it across the top. So when I roll, because uh, these have... Um, clamps that go across the bar and I don't like the clamp edges to dig into my stitching so I put pieces of felt 
to protect the stitching when I roll it up. And I think that puts me around, I think it was around 48%. I don't have my, I don't have my uh, tablet here to show my percentage complete in Pattern Keeper, but I think it was around 48 point something percent complete. So it's not, getting that second row of pages done didn't make it 50% because there's a little ridge of pages at the very bottom of the pattern that I'm gonna have to do. That's probably two to three percent of the pattern, so, or four percent, something like that. The next one I pulled out to work on after I got my page finish is another new start. And it's, Another pattern I got from Needlework Galleria. So this is from Rosewood Manor. And it's a tisket, a tasket. And I got a start on this one. Not a huge start, just a small one. I mean, I could barely say that I've got it started, but a start is a start. And I'll show you where I got to. This is my very 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 beginning start and let's try not to get shadows on it but this is the very center of the pattern i started on this middle flower right here just very basic beginning of that and i'm doing it on uh it is what is it 28 count picture this plus and the color is vellum and it fits on a fat quarter, so I'm happy about that. And I didn't feel like counting, so that's why I started in the middle. I didn't want to count, because a lot of times I like to start in the top left-hand corner and work my way, and that's actually how the pattern is, is starting the top left corner and working across and then working down, but I thought for this one I'm gonna start in the middle because I was too lazy to count and I just wanted to get started. <laughs> that's my second start. And I had a third start this week because it was a week of starts, I guess. Oh, sorry for the zippers. Um, this one is Blackberry Lane Designs. It's the other, the third pattern that I got from got Needlework Galleria last weekend, and it's called Frosty Weather by Marie Driscoll. It's a little snowman ornament, and it's got a Christmas tree and some little animals down here and a little birdhouse there. Now some of this is done two over one, or sorry, not two over one, two over two, and then some of it is one over one. So the birdhouse right here, the mittens on the snowman, the little animals, and various parts of this design, and the little snowflakes, if you can see the little snowflakes. Those are one over one, and I'm doing it on 32 count, so a little hard on the eyes, but I have my mag eyes that I use for magnification, so hasn't hasn't been too bad so far. And this one also, I just got a very small start on. Uh, but I got the fabric that is the same as what's used in the pattern. I got the polka dot fabric. It's um, what does it say? Belfast. It says Belfast Petty Point Blue, 32 count, and it's a nine inch by nine inch piece. Uh, the design fabric that's done on here says it's 32 count blue with white dots by Zweigart. So that's all I, that's all I know. <laughs> but I got a really small start. It's just the very top of the Christmas tree. Very small top of the Christmas tree. Just like very little right here. But I'm already doing some one over one. You can see here the the star at the top of the tree is one over one and then the rest is two over two so far but and I'm sorry I don't I don't iron my projects before I show them on here so my apologies if they're wrinkly but so that was my that was my third start for this week and I worked on that one on Friday night I did not get a chance to stitch on Wednesday night or Thursday night so Friday night I had a new start and then yesterday I decided to pull out a fall themed pattern. It I'm not a big Halloween stitcher. I don't stitch very much that's Halloween themed, but one of my favorite artists is Vincent Fleming 
and he's on Heaven and Earth Designs. A lot of his art pieces are on there. And one of the fall ones that he has available on Heaven and Earth Designs is, um, it's called Witch on Broom, which I like the, I like the colors in it. And I, I like the simplicity of it. And I think the witch looks really cute on it. So it's not like scary Halloween. I'm not a scary Halloween kind of stitcher. And I'm not too much into a lot of the cutesy Halloween stuff. I really like it. It just doesn't call to me to stitch on it. Partly because there's such a short window of Halloween stitching. You know, I really don't feel like stitching Halloween until the weather gets cold. And then by then it, here and where I live in the United States, it's usually early October before it starts to cool down and mid-October before it gets really cool and then there's only a couple weeks left until Halloween so I don't do a lot of Halloween stitching but I did pull it out and this is what's currently on my Q-snap that I'm working on and I had a little bit of this page already started just a very top corner piece uh, when I put it on here yesterday Saturday and I was working on it Saturday night. I didn't get a lot of stitching done on Saturday, but just just a little bit here with some of the dark blue. So you can tell there's a lot of background in this pattern. <laughs> a lot of blue. I feel like I do a lot of patterns that are blue. My my Beauty and the Beast pattern is has a lot of blue background. This one has a lot of blue background. I work a lot with colors 803, 823, 820, 923. I don't all those all those dark navy blue colors. So this is very, very small part of the top corner. And that is what I have on my Q-snap today and what I'll probably work on. Today's Sunday, I'll probably work on that for a little while in the afternoon. Um, I'll probably pull out my stitch an inch fall and get another square done on that. And that's pretty much what I have planned for today. This week, I'm gonna keep working on Witch on Broom. I'm gonna try and get my Sabrina Mirabilia out and work on her. This is Sabrina. And I'm gonna try and work on her a little bit this week. I showed her in my last video, if you wanna see how far I am on that one. So one more thing I wanna work on this week is my Santa stamp. Uh, Dimensions Gold Collection Kit. So this is what Santa stamp looks like. And this is the one that I want to work on this week. I've already started it. I started it years ago. And I pulled it out a little bit earlier this year in January and February and worked on it. And since we're getting a little closer to the holidays, I think I'm going to pull that out and start working on it again. Um, the other thing I want to do, so this is not my kit that I started. This is actually a full Santa stamp gold collection kit with unopened, it's never been opened, it has all the fabric, the threads, the pattern, like this is, this is an original Santa stamp kit out of print, can't get it anymore, except on eBay once in a while, um, but I have a second one and I'd like to do a giveaway. So I'd like to thank everybody for all the support in my last video. I know I went on a bit of a tangent at the end of my video with my life update, talking about my my job woes. They're not really that bad. I mean, when you think about things going on in the world, my little problems are not that significant. I mean, a, a job is a job and I'm very fortunate to have one. So, but I do wanna thank everyone who commented and made me feel just a slight bit less crazy that. I'm in my head, <laughs> like maybe this is just me, uh, just dealing with some of the challenges at my current job, but thank you all for leaving all the great comments. That was really super nice. Made me feel like, like I said, just a little less crazy. And um, I'm coming up on, I'm not yet at 3000 subscribers, but I mean, I'm getting pretty close. I'm close enough that what I'd like to do is do a giveaway for the Santa stamp kit. We're getting close to Christmas. If I wait any longer to do a giveaway, then, you know, I, I, I don't want to, I don't want to bump up against, you know, Thanksgiving, U.S. Thanksgiving, and all of a sudden the next thing you know, it's like I'm 
doing a giveaway for something that's Christmas related that somebody might want to have before Christmas, they can actually start it before Christmas and work on it during the holidays. So, so I'm going to do it now, the giveaway. Please don't mention the keywords. Don't say giveaway in your comment. Don't say free or um, don't say win or anything like that. Anything that would bring people that are just trying to find free stuff. I want this to go to somebody who is a stitcher who watches my channel. So it'd be great if you could, you know, if you're a subscriber. Um, but let's do, just put Christmas, the word Christmas, C-H-R-I-S-T-M-A-S. Put that in your comment on this video and I will enter you into a random drawing on my next video, which again, I don't know when that's going to be probably a week or two, probably a couple weeks. And I don't know. I don't know. The sooner you get the comment in, the better, because I just don't know what I'm going to film again. So put a comment on the video below and you make sure you're 18. You have to be 18 in order to enter because, you know, got to get personal information from you, mailing address and all that. So um, please be 18. Please be a subscriber. Don't mention all the, the giveaway free winning words that if you do, I'll have to delete your comment, and I would really hate to do that. So this is going to be my giveaway for one lucky winner on my next video. So, um, yeah. I don't know what else to say about that. So, okay, so what I'm going to do next is finish the video that I started last earlier in the week. And, again, it's kind of, it's about Teresa Wensler patterns. It, is my attempt to show you the patterns that I have, the two whips that I already have started, and I didn't finish it, and I'll tell you why after I show you. So I'm gonna put the video footage I already filmed in right here. Hi Floss Tube, it's Catherine, the Needleberry Stitcher, and I'm here today to walk you through uh, some of my collection of Teresa Wensler patterns. I'm going to show you uh, some of the patterns that I have, and I have a couple of kits, and that's probably it. I mean, I don't have a huge extensive collection. I have a lot of patterns, but I don't have all of them by any means, but these are a few of the ones that I've collected over the years, and I just thought it would be kind of fun to go through it, walk through uh, what I have and what I've started, and I've only started two, but I have, I think I have at least one kit that I haven't started two that I have as whips that I'm in progress, and then the leaflets and books that I have from the collection. So I will walk you through those now. Okay, first I'm going to show you the leaflets and books. So this is, first one is Teresa Wensler's, <laughs> of course, it's Teresa Wensler, that's what this video is about, uh, Trade Winds. And this is the Trade Winds. I always thought this one was really pretty. Just because it has that feel of the ocean and the ships and I like that it's the sampler even though samplers aren't always my favorite uh, a lot of Teresa Wensler samplers I actually really like so and I think it's because of just the ornate stitching and the borders and yeah so that's the first one the next one is called tea scene I think this one's really pretty too I love the teapot I just is so pretty and and this tablecloth the way it's so lacy it looks so pretty which I think is actually hard anger so I've never done hard anger so that would be a challenge if I were to try this one but uh, definitely on the back talks about like woven bars and buttonhole stitches and things like that so I think you have to do some cutting of fabrics which terrifies me to be honest um, okay, so the next one is the 12 Days of Christmas, which is a series of ornaments. You can actually do them individually as ornaments, and they all represent the 12 Days of Christmas. Or you can do it as one great big piece, kind of like it's shown here. I think here it's got it separated by black. I think you could just do it all as, that's what I would do. I would just do it all as one piece on one piece of fabric. That would be my preference, because I think it'd be cool to have them all together and do them all. So that's that one. This one's called Floral Bell Pull. I'll hold it back because it's very long. You can see that it's a bell pull. 
but then up close it shows two of the blocks that are up close which are really really pretty I have another bell pull pattern too and if I can think to put a picture in I couldn't find it and I don't know if I lent it to my mom or it might be stashed away somewhere outside of my other leaflets but it's the treetop sampler and that one is uh, the, bird, the one with the birds so I'm gonna put a picture in here so you can see which one I'm referring to I know I have that pattern somewhere I just I just couldn't find it and I wasn't gonna dig through too much for for the video I found everything that I could find so the next one is called Millennium and I bought this one because it was at I think it was either Joann's or Michael's and it was really cheap and I thought well it's Teresa Wentzler and it's really cheap so I could add it to my collection but to be honest I mean this one came out as like Y2K you know around 2000 obviously because it says Millennium I'm not sure I would stitch it it I'm not gonna ever say I wouldn't but it certainly isn't gonna be out of all the patterns that I have of Teresa Wensler, this isn't going to be the top, probably not the top 10 at all, but it, I, I'm glad I have it in my collection though. I think just because it's so dated, just because it's like themed from the year 2000, I think that's probably why I wouldn't do it. So the next one is called Woodland Fairy. This is another leaflet I got probably at Joann's or Michael's or someplace, but that's what that one's called and I think this one is very very cute I like it a lot I like the little mouse I like the fairy I like the the flora all the flowers the ferns yeah so I would I could see doing this one sometime I don't know if it would be my top one I'm actually saving my top there's four in a series that are my absolute favorite ever Teresa Wensler patterns and I'm going to show you those last um, but those are the ones that I will prioritize other than the two I've already started. But I'll show you those a little later. This one's called Celestial Dragon. I bought this one because it is full of gold and I don't know what kind of gold it is. Is it like, let me see. It's, it's got glass beads. It's got blending filament. 002V blending vintage gold blending filament and the reason I bought this one is because I was in a cross stitch shop when I was visiting my family in Edmonton Alberta Canada and in the cross stitch shop one of the ladies who was working there was working on this and she had it probably about two-thirds done or even like three-quarters done it was it was really close to done and the gold in it was amazing it made this design it was just unbelievable and it's like I say on almost every video I'm like when I see something when it's already stitched and I look at it on the cover of a, a book I'm like this doesn't ever do anything justice the pictures just don't because you can't see the the shimmer of the threads you can't see the 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 gold highlighting and things you can't see the beads it's just it's just not the same but anyway this one I um I don't, again, it's not one that is highest on my list to do, but when I saw that one done, it, it's spectacular. So if you're ever thinking of doing it because you absolutely love it, it's totally worth it. Do it. Um, the next one is a book of petites. There's two petites in this one. And Peacock and Unicorn is the leaflet. So it says Peacock and Unicorn. And those are the designs. So these are smaller. I mean, they're petites. So that's... That's the point. They're smaller. And I could definitely see doing one of these. I don't know which one and I don't think I, I don't know if I would do both, but I think because they're on the smaller side and when I say smaller, that still does, I mean, they're still like heavy blending. Like I'm looking inside here and the color key is like 90% color blending. So, which means you're using one thread of one color and one thread of another color and you're blending you're pulling the two strands together and uh, blended threads and I we're not enemies but we are not best friends either so definitely on my list of things that are slightly challenging 
And here on the back of this chart is actually showing the treetop sampler chart that I was telling you about. So I'm gonna hold that up. The treetop sampler, let's see if it'll focus. I don't know if it'll focus or not, but that's the treetop sampler pattern that I have somewhere that I can't find. And I probably already showed you a picture of it back in the video earlier when I edited, but anyway, she's got tons and tons of patterns and yeah, this was a, this was a cute little petite one. The next one is interesting. I like it, but it's called mermaid. I like it. I like the theme. I like the border. I like the mermaid, but there's something I'm just not sure about her face. And just so you know, all of her skin is one over one. So that's, uh, that, no, and I'm not afraid of one over one. I've done one over one on fancy ladies. That's not a problem, but, and I do one over one all the time on my full coverage, heaven earth designs and other full coverage pieces, but I don't know, there's something about, again, with the blending, right? But this one's pretty, almost pretty much full cover, Co <laughs> full, <laughs> full coverage. So I'm not sure. There's just something I'm not sure if I like her face. I don't know. It's just a preference. The next one, now this one I would do. Absolutely would do. Not my top four, but definitely would do. It is, again, another one that's almost full coverage. But it's called Peaceful Kingdom. And I absolutely love this one. Absolutely love it. The lion, the lamb. Just Peaceful Kingdom, right? I mean, when you get a lion and a lamb that can lay together like that, the world is a good place. So that's what that represents to me. All right, the next one is a book. Actually, it's... um. The first of the fantasy collection books, the best of Teresa Wensler fantasy collection. And this is what's on the cover. And I know you can't get a lot of the dragon patterns anymore. She's taken them down from her website. I mean, you can still get them here and there on eBay. So if you really, really want one, you can find it. But that's the cover of the book. This is what it looks like. And let me see if I can find pictures of what they look like. So the first one in the book is Rapunzel. That's what Rapunzel looks like. I had a friend in high school. Was it high school? I knew her in high school, but I think when I, when she started cross stitching was in college, university, and she started this one, our first year of university. And she had almost half done that first year. <laughs> and I never got to see it finished, but she did a really good job. The next one is called Day. Really, really pretty. Love that border. Look at the border. It's so pretty. And of course, if you have day, then you're obviously going to have night. And this is night. Again, another beautiful border. I love that. Now, this is one of my other favorites not in my top four because I haven't showed you the top four yet but this one's called magical night it's really pretty I love the colors in it I love that it's a woman and I love that there are pegasus horses instead of reindeer so that one I really really like the next one I also really, really like and would stitch this one sooner than any of the others and it's called Carousel. I like the, the lighter beigey colors. It reminds me of um, a time past, like gone by. It's not, um, what's the word? Not black and white. What's the other word? We have things that are in like kind of that brown oh I can't remember the word I won't remember the word but anyway that's what it kind of reminds me of just nice neutral muted colors very cute I like horses so yeah and the next one is called the castle sampler what's this one I think this one's pretty popular I think a lot of people have done this one Interesting about this one is that I actually found 
on clearance at one of the craft stores the castle sampler as a kit so that is my one kit of Teresa Wenzler's that I have it's the castle sampler and it comes with all the threads and the fabric and so it's never been open it was just on the clearance rack so I was like well I'm gonna go ahead and get that why would I uh, why would I not right if it's like 80% off or 75% off so I have the pattern but I also have the kit but you can see though too even the pictures look very different in the book if you look at how it's represented in the book and then look at the difference if I can do this right see the color difference this is like really like faded colors and then this one's really vibrant in the picture so which one is right that's that's what I want to know which one's right I have a feeling that the kit picture is probably more accurate and that the pictures here in the book are probably faded a little bit maybe just the lighting because all of them look a little bit like even the even the carousel like I had showed it, it's kind of faded muted colors but I have a feeling it's a little bit more vibrant and colorful and when it's actually stitched up all right the next one's called stroke of midnight if you want to see this finished blitz stitch Brian from um the floss tube channel blitz stitch finished this one for one of his daughters and he has it and he shows it in one of his older videos from a couple years a few years ago I can't I, I can't tell you exactly how long ago but I remember seeing this one finished in one of his videos and it was really really pretty and then there's the cover one which is the castle so same thing as what I showed on the cover and I love that one I would do that one for sure uh, oh there's another one Pegasus this one's like full coverage look at oh my that's gonna be like oh yeah that's confetti heaven right there look at that with blended colors and back stitching that's a pile of work I guarantee it they all are but this one really kind of makes me think it's gonna be busy and this one's called unicorn that one's pretty doing it on black though black fabric I have a few projects on black fabric and it's not my favorite uh, I gotta have really good lighting and magnifiers and I can't say that they're the projects that call to me very first <laughs> anyway so that is that book I do not have part two there is another book uh, fantasy collection part two it comes up on eBay once in a while and I'm always tempted to get it but it's always super expensive so I haven't gotten it I'm not gonna say I won't but I liked the patterns in this book I I shouldn't say better but I liked them uh, a little more all right I'm gonna show you before I show you the two that I've already started I'm going to show you the four patterns that are the top of my list that I want to do someday and let's see if I can find some type of order for them okay so the first one this is the carousel horses series the um by season so there's four there's four carousel horses this one is spring I just love these carousel horses Corinne from Cory Creates 08 her floss tube channel she just finished a carousel horse I don't think it was a Teresa Wensler but I could be wrong but I don't think it was but check out her channel because she finished the most amazing beautiful carousel horse and I fell in love with it it made me want to get my <laughs> Teresa Wensler carousel horse patterns out and start one immediately but I didn't because I didn't I wasn't stitching this summer too much it was probably a good thing because I might have started all four the next one is summer I love this one I mean I love them all but this one the darker horse so pretty so that's summer and then fall which I think perfect theme right the the dark brown horse kind of goes with the fall colors reminds me of foliage very pretty and then the winter which is very majestic 
Look at that. Look at the boughs right here all around as a border and the cape. Oh, that one is really pretty. So those are the four carousel horses that I'm probably more likely to start sooner than later, but I haven't planned it yet. I probably will soon. All right, I showed you the kit. I know I'm missing something else. I know I'm missing something else. I have another book. I'm going to pause here and see if I can find it. It's actually a Christmas themed collection book. Hold on. Twenty minutes later. One hour later. Two hours later. Okay, so that was my footage that I filmed earlier in the week. I didn't finish it. I couldn't find one of my pattern books. And I looked for, I started out two hours, I looked for that book right after I filmed that footage. Like I, I was like, I have to find this book. Where is this book? What happened to my book? And it was the Christmas book by Teresa Wensler. It was the best of her Christmas patterns. I looked and looked. I went through my craft room, all the places that I store my patterns. I have a couple of bins, containers, plastic totes, whatever you call them. I have some places here on my shelving. I, I went through everything twice. Not just that day that I filmed. The next day, I went through everything again. Still didn't find it. And then I, I'm like, I, I just got to give up. I'll just come and finish my video and just show what I have left and just ignore, skip, edit the fact that I can't find that book. I know I have that book. I, I mean, I've looked through it multiple times. I know I have that book. So yesterday it dawned on me, do I really have that book? Like I'm going absolutely crazy looking for a book and now I'm wondering, do I even have that book? I was sure I had that book. I was 100% positive they had the Teresa Wensler Best of Christmas Patterns book. Like, cause I'm sure I leafed through it. But now I'm wondering, did I just go through it on eBay and look through all the pictures on eBay so many times because I want it? But did I ever really buy it? <laughs> Do, did I really leaf through that? Like, did I really go through that in my hands or did I just scroll through? I'm, I went absolutely nuts this week, like thinking about this. Like, and yesterday I'm like, I'm so nuts looking for this book. Do I even own it? Like, that's crazy. That's crazy. If I have that much, that many patterns and that, like, that's, that's crazy. I'm, I'm, I was a hundred percent sure I had that book and I'm still not a hundred percent sure that I don't. I don't know. If I find it someday, I'll show it to you, <laughs> but it's not going to happen in this video. So I got to a point yesterday I was like, I'm going to go through my craft room again. And I was just like, no, I'm not going to go through my craft room again. And that thought went through my head, that saying, like if you watched my last video, the saying went through my head, looking for that pattern book again, the juice isn't worth the squeeze. And when that went through my head, if you watched my last video, you'll know why I, that saying is really annoying to me. And the fact that it went through my head made me so mad. You're feeling strong, my friend. Call me Elf one more time. He's an angry elf. But it's true, right? That saying, like, it's not worth my time going through my craft room again, looking for a book that I don't even know if I own or not. I think I do, but I don't know. So anyway, that's where I'm at. That's whatever. <laughs> So I'm going to just finish this video showing you the two things. Actually, actually, my search was not for nothing because I found two more patterns that I had not found when I went through and gathered all my Teresa Wentzler patterns. The first time I found two more patterns that I had that was in a totally different location from my other patterns. So I'm going to show you those and I'll show you my whips and then we're done. So one of them that I have is called Angel of Frost. And this is Angel of Frost. I love the border on it. I love the angel wings. I love the cloak. 
I think that's just so pretty. Look at the border. It's really pretty. So that's one of my patterns that I had somehow got separated from the rest of my patterns. And then the other one is a wedding sampler. And that one again, just really, really pretty borders on it. And maybe somebody will get married someday and I'll start this, but I, I really don't want to ever start something with someone's wedding in mind because I know it won't get done. It just won't. So what I, what I would do is stitch this with no one in mind, with no timeline and no date, and then have it ready, not do the letters and the date. And just if someone important to me got married, then I would just stitch the letters, get it framed, make a gift out of it. I, I don't know. I, I love the idea of stitching it, but I, it's probably not going to happen. I'd have to do the carousel horses first, obviously. Those have to be done first. All right, now to the two projects that I've... There's two patterns that I have that are already started, and I'll show you those. And then we're done. All right, the first one is Egyptian Sampler. And this is the pattern and I started this one I'm pretty sure it was in 2004 2005 I know I, we lived in Colorado at the time so it had to be before 2006 because that's when we moved to Missouri and I loved it because of all of the gold threads and everything in it and I I mean I I love the style of the Egyptian stuff but my husband made a comment about it when I was working on it I was like oh look I'm working on this and he's just like that doesn't go with anything in our house. <laughs> I think I kind of got a little discouraged after he said that. When my husband makes comments about my stitching, it actually hits like personal because I really care about what he thinks, especially when it's stuff that's going to hang on our wall so someday, maybe someday. And I think I took it a little to heart and I was like, oh, he doesn't like it. So I, I put it away and it hasn't come out since. So I haven't worked on this one in a very long time. We'll show you how far I got. I'm doing it on 28 count even weave and that's as far as I got on it. Just started the top border. Not a big start at all, but I don't know. It's got some specialty uh, th stitches in it that I think are pretty cool. Um, that's that one. And the other one that I started is Noah's Ark. This is Noah's Ark. It's a sampler. It's got the alphabet. And you all know I'm not a huge sampler fan, but I love Teresa Wimsler. And I love this Noah's Ark. I love the boat. I love all the little animals. They're all one over one all around the border. So this is all two over two, two over two. And then these animal sections are all one over one. I think that'll be so pretty. And I started it. Actually, I got this when I was in Edmonton, Alberta, Canada. There used to be a cross-stitch store there. It's not there anymore. I think it was called Stitcher's Heaven. I could be wrong on that. I thought that's what it was called. Um, but I looked it up and it's not there anymore. And I bought the pattern and I, was, I started it while I was up there visiting family. And this is as far as I got, just working on the alphabets. Not a huge start, but I only bought just the colors of floss I needed just to work on the alphabet because I knew I probably wouldn't get much more than the alphabet done while I was there. And I didn't even get the alphabet done, but. So that, and that's, that's the end of my Teresa Wensler pattern and whip collection. With the exception of the book that I don't know if I own or not. Someday maybe I'll get it. And if I find that I get it, and then I find the one that I maybe have or don't have or own, then it will be a future giveaway, right? So, because now I now that I don't know if I have it or if I, I just, now I want it. Obviously I want it, right? Because if I can't find it, I have to have it. So one of these days I'll go out on eBay and see if I can find it. I don't know. Not a priority. I have enough patterns. You think I have enough patterns? I have enough patterns. I think I'm good. So I'm going to end my video here and 
thanks again for watching. If you made it this far in the video, thank you for being a subscriber. If you're not a subscriber, uh, feel free to subscribe. Uh, I don't, I usually put out a monthly video or have minus the summer when I wasn't doing any filming, but usually I do it once a month. But since I have a giveaway now in this video, I think I'll probably come back probably in a couple of weeks. And that way I can get a winner for something that's Christmas themed and get it in the mail. So if somebody wanted to actually start it, then they'd have it before the holiday season starts. Although, you know, it has already started. Big box stores are already playing Christmas music and putting Christmas stuff up. I'm like, oh my gosh, we haven't even hit, we haven't hit, we just hit Canadian Thanksgiving this weekend. Happy Thanksgiving to everyone in Canada. Uh, we just, we haven't even hit Halloween yet. We haven't hit U.S. Thanksgiving yet. And Christmas stuff is already out there. Now, I love Christmas stuff, but can we get through some other holidays first? Please. I want to enjoy the fall. I want to enjoy pumpkins and fall harvest and all the things. And I feel like we're just skipping over some of that good stuff. So anyway, I will see you in a couple of weeks. And happy stitching. And bye for now.